Hey guys, I'm Sam Crack, and this is my Ford Focus RS. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Where's all the body panels? Why is this all smashed in the front? Well, I actually bought the car like this from a salvage auction. And if you're new to my channel, I like to buy cars from the salvage auction and rebuild them. Not only can you save thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars, you can make for a really fun project while you're at it. When I saw this specific RS at the auction with only 7,000 miles and damage, I was convinced I could fix. I had to have it. I used the never stop bidding strategy and made sure I was the last man standing and well here it is but that strategy can generally be pretty costly especially if you get into a bidding war now there's one other strategy i use all the time and it's basically where you throw in loose lowball bids on really nice cars how's ten thousand bucks sound for a 2017 ferrari which mysteriously has some red paint beneath its black paint definitely have no use for this lamborghini but i'll definitely pay five grand for it 7500 for a 2008 audi r8 sign me up now i've proven this method to be 100 successful in losing an auction every single time. Except when it comes to this RS7, my Audi RS7, and I am so thrilled to be telling you that. Let me show you around it real quick. may seem that this car had a front end issue because all the front components are missing it was actually rear ended and pushed into the car in front of it right here in the corner of the hood it was bent back just a little bit but i've already had it repaired at a professional body shop it was so minor to begin with and now it's like it never even happened if this car were in a front end collision it would be an absolute nightmare going into the audi parts department there's radiators intercoolers and sensors literally everywhere here's the original bumper from the rs7 this was on the car when it was in the accident even though it's absolutely filthy dirty because it's been stored away for a little while now it is 100 percent perfect here you might see some marks like this but this car actually had paint protection film all over it you can see it's peeled up a little bit in the corner here and that completely saved this bumper from getting damaged and that's really important because you see this right here this is a carbon fiber valance it also has carbon fiber lower grills this car had the carbon fiber package on it and these pieces from the dealership are extremely expensive even this front grill costs over a thousand dollars and there's a little camera that goes there i don't even want to know how much this costs I've already had the rear end of the RS7 repaired so that the rebuild process is a little bit more seamless over the next coming episodes. Before I show you what it looks like now, I'm gonna take you back and show you exactly what I saw in the auction photos and what it looked like when it arrived in person. These are the exact photos from the insurance auto auction that had my Audi RS7. The same photos I saw when I put in my lowball preliminary bid. Now a preliminary bid just means I bid before the live auction. Cars like this almost always catch a bid during the live auction. In my case, this one didn't. My preliminary bid was the highest standing bid on the car. This car was originally located in Austin, Texas, and I bought it sight unseen just based off of these photos. From the front angle, it really seemed that none of the body in the front end was damaged. I was very questionable as to why it was actually disassembled here in the front I didn't really notice any of the damage here on the hood what I was mostly concerned about were these front frame rails that's the aluminum colored piece here I'm not sure if they're made out of aluminum or steel on this car but if they were made out of aluminum and if they were damaged they're really not meant to be repaired as you can see both the passenger and the driver side frame rail look straight and complete as they were when they showed up so that was perfect the only other thing i was hoping that showed up along with the car were these headlights that were clearly not installed and well they weren't when we check out the rear photos it became more apparent why this car was totaled out and that's the damage done here to the lower rear unibody now one of the other questions i had was whether or not this rear hatch was reusable or not 
There's some funny reflections going on in the corner here. Seeing it lifted up here made it seem like it was pretty bent. From the other angle, you see that a body shop drew some arrows on it, probably telling us that it didn't line up anymore. And also, you start to question as to whether the hatch pushed into the roof, damaged the roof at all, which thankfully it did not because that would be a very difficult repair. But I did notice the exhaust pipe sticking out here, and that could have just been the reason why this hatch was lifted and left open. Also, seeing the rear bumper laying on the ground didn't really give me any indication of how damaged it was was at all but it did come with the car and as I'm about to show you it's not really usable anymore now the interior got me really excited in all the interior photos there's not a single airbag that's been deployed although on the dashboard the airbag light was lit up and you guys got to remember that a lot of these cars aren't started just the power to the electronics are on and that could mean that every single light on the dashboard lights up until the car actually starts so didn't know what to make of that either until the car showed up. Now if an auction provides you an engine bay photo like this, I like to Google the same car's engine bay. So I'll just go ahead and type in Audi RS7 engine bay and I like to compare the photos. Most of the components here in the engine bay are very costly. So it's good to compare and see if there's any missing pieces or any damaged pieces. Here from the auction photo, it looked like there was really nothing damaged and when comparing it with my Google image, with the exception of the upper cowl, everything looked complete and undamaged. Here's exactly what the rear end of the car looked like when I received it in person. Absolutely no repairs have been done at this point here. You can see the damage was concentrated towards the driver's side of the rear unibody. Here's the original bumper. This is what was on the car when it was in the accident. Obviously, you can see the damage here to the lower part of the bumper, that really big crack right there. This is something that I personally wouldn't attempt to reuse, although the top part of the bumper is not too bad, which actually made for damage that was quite a bit more tolerable than if the smash was directly to the rear center. Now what's missing here is the lower diffuser. That must have been completely destroyed and that part is extremely expensive because it's completely made out of carbon fiber. Now in these bumpers, there are a lot of usable parts still like this one exhaust tip right here or a few of these backup sensors that are left. There's one here and there's a turn signal on each side. So the rear end of my R7 came pretty much disassembled from the auction. That was likely done by a body shop as an insurance company will send a car like this to a body shop before they decide on totaling it. Body shop will go ahead, disassemble it, and then assess the damages and give a quote to the insurance company. Now, this is the corner over here that was damaged originally. We'll zoom in on the repair and you could see that that was pushed in and now it's been completely pulled out. It still is a bit unsightly in that area. However, there is a big trunk mat that will cover all of that. If that's not good enough for you, one thing that can be done is you could smooth over the pulled out repair and you could go ahead and paint it when it's done. And if you ever lifted up any of that interior trim, you never even see it. There's also a ton of electronics in here for the rear hatch area and all the rear sensors that go along with it. These are the shocks that will actually lift the hatch up. So this car is being propped up by this broom, otherwise it turns into a guillotine. And now I'm really excited to show you guys what the rear end of the RS7 looks like repaired. Check it out. It came out really excellent. This rear bumper was sold to me as a complete assembly. That's everything, including the valance, the exhaust tips, the rear sensors like we just talked about, everything in one piece. And guess what? It was the same exact metallic gray color as the car itself. So I saved a ton of money by just buying the entire assembly, thousands of dollars compared to what Audi would have charged me at the dealership. And check out those lines. There's really no telling that this car was in a severe rear end collision. It's not even 100% assembled yet. There's a few last things that we've got to do, but we're going to do it together in an upcoming episode. Our last area of repair on the Audi is actually in the interior. Now, before I go ahead and open the door, I'm going to warn you guys, it's really dirty inside. I'm going to tell you exactly why. You notice when I open the door, the window pops down a little bit. That's pretty common on these frameless window cars. And everything is driven by electronics in this car. And these cars sit at auctions for a pretty long time before they get sold off. So what happens is the battery ends up dying. Before the battery ends up dying, it pops the windows down so that if you do open the car door with the battery dead, 
the window doesn't shatter from being up. With the battery dead and the window popped open a little bit, it gives enough of a gap here to allow some dirt to show up and then your interior has a nice sheen of dirt all over everything. Don't worry, I'm gonna clean this up the second I get done talking to you guys. Now, our area of repair is right here and that is the seat belts. Unfortunately, even though no airbags deployed, you can see there's not a single deployed airbag anywhere, the seat belts did lock up. And when I say the seat belts, all four of them seem to have locked up. You can see this one right here is not retracting and there's a bunch of slack because the driver was obviously wearing it. The same thing is apparent over here on the passenger side, also locked up. Unfortunately, in my experience with Audis, all of the seat belts lock up, including likely the rear ones back here. I'm not even sure if this car has the seat belts in the rear because during the disassembly, the body shop took all of that stuff apart. So they might be hidden back there somewhere, but I'm not sure and I don't even want to know. Wait, no, no, don't pop it up on the screen. I don't want to know how much a seatbelt assembly is for this car. Thanks a lot. I knew it was really expensive and in most insurance repairs, they completely replace these entire seatbelt assemblies. Imagine four seatbelt assemblies at that price. That'll easily contribute to totaling a car out. Now there is a solution to replacing your seatbelts. You can actually repair the assembly and we'll get into that when we disassemble this car. But while we're at it, we might might even have the opportunity to change the color of the seatbelt from black to maybe something that would match these brake calipers. Now that I've given you a complete overview of my wrecked Audi RS7, I'm sure there's one question that remains for many of you, and that is, how much did you pay for it? And while this car will likely be the best deal I've ever got at a salvage auto auction, if you consider the amount of savings off a of retail when I'm completely finished rebuilding it, it is the most amount of money I've ever spent on a wrecked car Period. When I finish rebuilding the RS7, I'll give you guys a complete breakdown on what it cost me from beginning to end. From buying the car at auction with fees, to buying all the parts to put it back together, and paying the body shop in between to fix the hood and also fix that rear end damage. So you'll just have to keep watching, and I'll throw in a few hints along the way. Now guys, if you're as excited as I am to rebuild an Audi RS7, be sure to hit that like button. Also, be sure you're following me on Instagram where I'll be posting a lot of photos of the rebuild process of this Audi RS7 before they go live here on YouTube. Guys, I wanna thank you very much for watching and I will catch you very soon.